In this video, we're going to introduce the momentum operator. So in the previous lecture, we introduced operators as a piece of an eigenvalue eigenfunction equation, right? Where the operator operates on the eigenfunction, you get an eigenvalue and that function back again. So we have these different operators for all of the different observables in quantum mechanics. And the first one that we really want to introduce here outside of the Hamiltonian is the momentum operator. And so this gives you, this operator gives you the linear momentum of a particle. And you can see just like you would, uh, you know, think in classical mechanics, it's going to be proportional to the motion of that particle, right? It's, it's an operator because it's telling you to do something. It's telling you to take the derivative with respect to X and multiply it by H bar Planck's constant over I, the imaginary number. So, um, so yeah, the momentum of the particle is proportional to its motion in the X direction. Right. So this um, so even though this is a different type of, you know, uh, nuts and bolts of what you're actually doing versus classical physics, you still can make these different analogies to classical physics, even when you're looking at quantum operators. So let's look at an example of applying this moment, this linear momentum operator. And so this problem asks, what is the linear momentum of a particle described by the following wave function? And so we got the free particle wave function that we're familiar with at this point, right? And it's asking for part A when B is equal to zero and part B when A is equal to zero, right? So both of these cases are when you cancel out one of those functions that's involved in that superposition. So, um, so let's look at both of those cases. So for A, right, this is gonna be when B is equal to zero. So that'll mean that the wave function uh, simplifies to a is equal to e to the i k x, right? So from there, um, what we do here is take the derivative of the, uh, or we apply the momentum operator to this wave function, right? So we want to take the momentum operator and apply it to the wave function, right? Because it should give us the uh, momentum, the wave function back again, and the eigenvalue, which will be the momentum. So doing this, right, we're gonna use this operator, h bar over i, d dx, and put our wave function in there, e to the i k x. Right, so taking this first derivative, Right, since we have e to the i k x, that first derivative is just going to be i k, right? So we'll bring down um, i k, and we'll have a e to the i k x. Right, so uh, from here we get a little bit of cancellation here, right? Because the i's cancel out here, and so when we drop everything else down, we get. Um, k h bar a e to the i k x. And so you can see here, we do get the wave function back again. This is psi, our wave function. And so that means this is our eigenvalue, right? So this is our eigenvalue. So what that means is that we have a particle traveling with the momentum of positive k h, right? So our momentum in the x direction for this case is going to be k h bar, right? So that's the linear momentum of the particle traveling in this direction, right? So, um, so that gives you the momentum. Applying the momentum operator to a wave function for a given system gives you its momentum, right? Just like the Hamiltonian operator gives you the total energy this momentum operator gives you the momentum. So let's look at part B. So part B is asking us um, about what the case where A is equal to zero. If A is equal to zero, then that means we're just left with the term with B in front. So we have, yep, psi is equal to B e to the negative IKX, right? So in this case, again, we're going to apply the momentum operator to the wave function. So we're gonna have h bar over i d dx, and we're gonna be applying it to b e to the negative i k x. 
So again, we take the derivative here. Um, H bar over I comes down and we end up with negative I H bar out or I K out front. And we got B E to the negative I K X. Right again here, we get a little bit of cancellation. So these I's cancel out. Negative sign still sticks around there though. So we got negative K H bar B E to the negative I K X. So here again, we get the wave function back again, right? So we get this guy's psi, right? And we get this as the eigenvalue, right? Negative K H bar, right? So in this case, the momentum is negative K H bar. So from this, we could actually um, we can actually interpret a pretty interesting feature about this wave function, right? The two pieces of this superposition. If you take out the each term, right, you have a particle traveling with the exact same momentum. However, they're traveling in different directions because in one case you have a momentum of positive kh bar. In the other case, you have a, a momentum of negative kh bar. So you could interpret this as this function is, uh, you know, corresponding to motion in one direction, let's just say the left. And this superposition, this function uh, in the superposition is corresponding to motion in the right, right? And so adding those both together gives you some direction for the particle in one way or the other, right? But you need both of those to describe the motion of the particle um, in this one dimension. It's movement to the left and the right, the positive and negative momentum in both cases, right? So this gives us, so applying this, this shows how we can apply general operators to get uh, eigenvalues for observables. But also you can see that we can find out, you know, some pretty interesting properties of these wave functions just by applying these different operators to functions involved in the superposition.